Just ahead on this week's Kingdom Talk, join Deborah from Vessels of Honor Worldwide as she welcomes her guest. Together they share God's Word on relevant topics that will not only teach, but will inspire you to dig deeper into God's Word. Through these teachings, we are confident you will grow stronger and form a deep and lasting relationship with Christ, empowering you to conquer anything and live a victorious life. And now, Kingdom Talk. As that blade pulls out, seals up, seals up that hurt, you know, anoints that hurt, takes away that bitterness. And that's what I pray anytime that I minister is that uh, if it hurts going in, Lord, soothe that, uh, that, that balm of Gilead, you know, mm-hmm. uh, seal it up, seal up that hurt and that bitterness and, uh, and rip it away. And let there be peace and let there be joy uh, to know that you know God loved them so much. He loves us all so much that he would minister the truth to us. Okay. Just like a parent does. You wouldn't let your uh, children go out and play in the street right. or right. go jump in a fire. Right. And, and that's what, why leadership loves you so much. The Lord loves us so much that he wants us to know these things. Yes, he does. It, it's like... Um, whom the Lord loves, He chastens because yes. He's He's a wonderful Abba Daddy. Yes. Right? Yes. He is. And if somebody is in a church and they're not being chastened, something's wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, something's wrong mm-hmm. with their relationship with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, because we all get chastened right. by oh, our yeah. loving Heavenly yes. Father. We do. Thank God for that. Thank God. We know <laughs> we're His. Right. Amen. We are. Amen. You know? I've been serving the Lord for 42 years, something like that. Uh, but you know, even today, you know, uh, the word will convict me. You know, when it's Praise preached, God. or yeah. or even when I'm reading it, or I hear it on the radio, or on a, you know, a preaching CD. You know, that's a good thing. You know, about CDs or DVDs. You know, I believe they, there's, there's the anointing still in that CD, that DVD, just because it was already preached one time. Right. You know, you can go to somebody and, and you can put it in, and if there's it's something going word. on, it's, it's still, still the word. word. The word is still. Uh, Bring healing. Yes, right. it does. And it's Amen. eternal. And it's, it's the eternal. same yesterday, today, yeah. and That's right. Exactly. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Okay. Who's next? Me? Or yes. Number seven. Number seven. <laughs> These individuals will often allege having great spiritual insight into church government and affairs, but they will not appear, appeal to be proper, no, what, they be, but they will not appeal to proper authority. Rather, they first appeal to others. Often their opinion becomes the last word on the matter, thereby elevating their thought thoughts above the pastors. Anybody ever seen that happen before? Often. Oh, very often. <laughs> often, yes. You know, I, I've seen, uh, uh, I was at a church one time years ago when I was younger, and the minister, the pastor brought a word, and uh, someone didn't like it. You know, I said this earlier, you know, that they would go to, like, that I, I would, Physically seeing them set down by a person. What do you think? You think that's really what that means? Uh, I don't think that what pastors quite got it right. Like you know, mm-hmm. and they'll go the next. What do you think it means? And what? Even they may not. They may know what they're doing. They may not know what they're doing. But mm-hmm. uh, they're sowing discord. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. And a Jezebel spirit will sow discord. Mm-hmm. That's and, right. and that's why it's always, uh, you know, I pray that God in, in each church will pray. Uh, place people that uh, will have that discerning spirit and always have that, that eye, that you know, spiritual eye, looking, you know, to take care of the flock. You know, the, the pastor does that as well. But we, you know, we've got to realize it's not only the pastor that's right. that needs to have that, that right. spiritual eye. Right. Sometimes right. we think uh, it's you know, the pastor, you know, it's his duty to take care of all these things. But we're called to do these things as well. Uh, amen. 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 I, I, I feel like we fail in that area sometimes in the I church so too. Mm-hmm. I, I really do, and, and you're right because that Jezebel spirit will go in and, and sow discord and try to bring disunity and destruction to the church if they can't gain control from the right. leadership. Right. You know, they'll they'll go and they'll they'll start gossiping, or or do the the parking lot prophecies or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, to to bring disharmony in the church. Mm-hmm. You know, and yes, we need faithful prayer warriors that will lock arms and stand together yeah. and you know and and pray um, and bring the sermon into into the congregation yeah. and bring harmony and unity you know 
unity, that's God's heart, is unity among his body. You know, he's not going to come for a disunified body. He's going to come for a unified body, Amen. you know, with spot, wrinkle, and blemish, you know. So this is this is the reason that we're doing this. We want to get the church ready Amen. to wake us up, to rise up, and to be prepared for the soon return of our Lord yes. and our bridegroom, Amen. you know. Yes. Amen. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. I <laughs> can't either. Amen. Amen. What's the saying? Even so, Lord, come quickly. Yes. Even so. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There's a lot of you know a lot of things that you, that we need to be aware of, but it's time for the church to wake up. Right. Uh, the church has fallen away from their duties. I believe. Amen. Amen. The church has fallen away from uh, prayer time. Right. Uh, you know, the church has uh, thinks church needs to end at a certain time. And, and, and I've seen when I, growing up when I was a child, and, and, and I've heard other uh, ministers talk about this. And when I was a child, you know, our praise and worship it was nothing to be two or three hours for praise and worship. Right. Then we would go into the Word. That was maybe another hour and a half or something like that. Then altar time. Right. Uh, you know, it, many a time growing up, uh, it could be like two or three o'clock in the morning before we got home. Right. And you never saw how powerful that was. Looking back now, I see how powerful that was because God was imparting things right. and, to, and to youth, uh, the, the church latched onto the youth and the church disciplined the youth and the church taught the youth and the, uh, how to worship, how to praise, mm -hmm. you know, how to give their all mm -hmm. to the Lord. And we don't see that happen. Now it's, now don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with programs, but now it's program this, program that. Right. It, there's not no enough prayer time exactly. teaching our youth how to get down right. in intercessory prayer and Absolutely. crying out to God, how to travail. Right. You know, and, and we've got to know these things, mm -hmm. ladies. It's just, right. uh, if we don't teach our youth if we, and one another, right. if we don't, uh, we're not going to be able to stand. And I was just thinking, too, you know, how we were saying that the Jezebel spirit is a principality. Mm -hmm. and, 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 of course, uh, the Word of God says that, that the enemy, he's, he is the power and principality of the air. Yes. You know, a lot of times our destruction comes because we would rather turn the television on and watch these things that come through the power, mm -hmm. the principality of the air, you know, because we, we're a gate. We have eye gates, we have ear gates, mm -hmm. you know, and what we watch and what we see, what we listen to affects us yes. spiritually, yes. you know, and also can disarm us and cause us to be a victim to the Jezebel spirit. Um, I can remember when I was going through counseling class, learning how to counsel people, we learned that over 70% of the pastors in the churches of America were addicted to pornography. Wow. You know, that's a Jezebel. That's Jezebel because she is a spirit of whoredoms, yeah, right. you know, and causes the church, excuse me, but to go a whoring after other gods. Right. And this is a serious matter. Yeah. You know, if it starts in the leadership, what does it do to the frame, our spiritual frame as a church in America? And we're in trouble. Yes. You know, yes. we are in trouble because we have allowed these things to come into the church. And we've allowed, I mean, who would raffle off a car to get people to come to church? Why can't we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to draw, to draw the people? <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes, I, I agree, agree with that. Agree you know? With that. But we get into all these programs, and we, 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 we've talked before about uh, how humanism has gotten into the church and everything. Well, this is the epitome of the Jezebel spirit because she's a principality, and she causes all these disruptions to come in, you know, and to take our focus and our, our focus off of Christ. Distraction. You know, yes. or distract us from the Holy One, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You see it all too often. I, I, you know, I've seen it happen just as about a, maybe a, a church is about to get to the top right exactly and go flying over that top that's when that spirit comes in and knock, knocks them back does something to distract them mm -hmm. and get their focus off uh, off of the Lord mm -hmm. and what what we need to be doing so mm -hmm. this is a warning to the prophetic church yes. if we're operating in prophetic we better know good and well yes. that we're going to be attacked by yes. the Jezebel spirit you know and and, and those those demons because she is a it's a principality. Yes. So if you think about it as a rank of an army, she's like at the top, you know, and she's got these ranks underneath her that she will 
tell to go forth, you know, a spirit right. of fear, a right. spirit of lust, a spirit right. of, of whatever, you know, distraction right. or, or, or whatever to, to get the eyes off of the Lord and off the prophetic right. and to bring it down, right. you know. We have to go forth in the spirit of Elijah. That's what we're called forth to do, to 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 uh, um, to war against the prophets of Baal or or the prophets, the false prophets. You know, to recognize that and to bring them down. Amen. 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 You know, I think it's sometimes uh, we don't we we don't teach how to block the attack of the enemy. Right. I heard a minister say, and I love you know. Well, we've all grown up on you. Plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. But she was talking about uh, it just come flying out of her mouth. It just came out different. Uh, when she said, I blood block the assignment of the enemy that That's is attacking. Good. The blood yeah. block. The blood of Jesus. Yeah, you know, the blood of Jesus. It's just a barrier. Of, you know, the blood of right. Jesus uh, it blocks everything of the assignment of the demonic force right. coming forward. And whew, I feel the Holy Ghost Amen. in this. Amen. I really do. Uh, uh, you know, I, I weep a lot, but yes. it, you know, when when you know how much God loves you, and He doesn't want to see you attacked with these things, but sometimes we go through these things. But the, the major reason we go through these things sometimes is because we don't know how to take authority over the enemy and blood block the assignment of the enemy of the demonic force that sends forth, like you were saying, that Jezebel spirit will send send out the. De- the uh, uh, demonic forces to do different things, whatever our weakest point in our life is. Right. So we we must we must teach one another how to blood block, how right. to plead the blood of Jesus over our own lives, over our, our families, our children, our grandchildren, over our church family, yes. and even our Facebook friends. Yes, because yes. right. a Absolutely. lot of people, you know, I read a lot of uh, things going on, and 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 I. I want to say this, and I don't want to offend anyone, but you know what? The, the death and life are the power of the tongue. Yes. The more you give praise to the enemy of what he's doing to you, mm-hmm. the more you're going to hold on to that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 there's a lady in uh, Memphis right now that I'm thinking of that uh, is just constantly, and we're not, you know, friend friends, but it, I, I read, I, I read a lot of the things that's, you know, just negative stuff. Right. And as long as we uh, project the negative and as long as we speak that forth, you know what? We're causing those words to come, become alive. And, uh, and I've learned over the years, yes, there are going to be times when, you know, yes, the things uh, are hard to go through. But, you know, we need to pray, blood block for our friends on Facebook, yes. for our right. families. You know, Lord, open their spiritual eyes yes. to see what their words, their Sometimes we're our own worst enemy, that's right. and um, we give more credit to to the things to the devil. That's it's not the devil's fault; it's our own fault. Mm-hmm. Because the Word of God says, "Death and life are in the power of tongue." And I love what Lana does. She sp- uh, she posts these things about scriptures mostly right. mm-hmm. uh, about how powerful you know what we say and, and our fruit. You know, that's one thing I look for in a person is what are the evidence of the fruit when the Jezebel right. spirit uh, comes against you. And tries to draw others, you know, in against you, the enemy, everything. Look at the fruits. If they're talking about someone, look at that person's fruit. Mm-hmm. Never form your opinion based on the opinion of someone else. Amen. I mean, th- Amen. That's, we, we can't do that. What does God's word say about that person? Right. When someone comes to you, you say, well, what about you think about this situation? Well, my first thing will be to say, well, let's get into the word of God and see what God says about Amen. the situation. Amen. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. 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 It's not thus saith Belinda or Lana or Desi. Right. It's thus saith the Lord. Right. I'm right. sorry I got off on a tangent on this, but you know that that that's in my heart right now is uh, for people to know what they speak. Right. Uh, you can cause your situation to be holding on longer to you than God intended it to right. be. Right. You know the situation may have come up on you to teach you know to help draw you into a deeper prayer life. I don't know, but uh, sometimes we hold on to that because. I, I think that's one of the, uh, it may not be in these characteristics about, to, but uh, we uh, we like what's familiar. Mm-hmm. Right. That's true. And uh, and yeah. we tend to hold on to the familiar thing right. because it will be too hard to actually deal with it and, and to be set free and to be, be delivered. I, I personally believe when God delivers, he delivers. He doesn't take his deliverance away. We move away from the deliverance. Right. 
Yeah, yeah, I've heard somebody, well, so God takes it away, well, you walk away from it, is what think, you do. I think sometimes, too, uh, being able, uh, uh, when you're holding on to the familiar, you know, there again, there's fear mm -hmm. in stepping away and stepping into something unknown. You know, mm -hmm. I love that song, Ocean, you know, mm -hmm. take me where my, you know, where, my, take me to my, where how does it go? I can't remember. <laughs> Where feet may dwell, you know. Okay. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to be afraid. I want to go. I want to go where you're leading me, Lord. Amen. Amen. Whether it's in the high places of the Lord, right. right. Because yeah. wherever God leads you, He's going to see you through right. through the things. Amen. Well, I think about the Lord leading us. He goes before us. Mm -hmm. He's already preparing the way before yeah. us, Amen. and He's with us, and He's upon us. And he's in us, Amen. and he covers our backside, oh, and he surrounds us. Hallelujah. So we're covered. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. We're seated so, in heavenly places amen. with him. So even underneath our feet, we're surrounded. Yes. Amen. We're, we're, yes. Surra hey, we're surrounded. We're surrounded. Yes. We're yes. surrounded. Yes. Praise right. God. So it just goes back to trusting him. Yes. And I think about the old hymnal, Oh, for Grace to mm -hmm. Trust Him More. Yes. And, and I find myself in that place, and, you know, and I've walked with the Lord for, for many years. But uh, the more I walk with him, the more I realize how I need to trust him more and more. Yes, yes. You know. Amen. So. Amen. Well, just think about that, you know, the children of Israel, you in the promised land, you know, when they sent out the spies, and they were talking about the grapes were so heavy, they had them, what, on stouts. Right. Can you, those are some humongous yes. grapes. Right. Yes. I, that, I mean, that's God. Right. But, you know, instead of seeing that, seeing those things, you're thinking that those was Joshua, Joshua, Joshua Caleb saw the good news. We're well able to conquer right, these things, right? right. Yeah. But the the two the, the ones that were negative, the spies, the spies. I mean, they saw ourselves as grasshoppers. They were speaking a negative word. They, right, were, exactly. they were making that become a lie. And I believe uh, that would when we do that, sometimes it would cause murmuring in the camp. Right. Yes, it does. Yes. And uh, and we've got to be careful. Uh, because I don't want to be responsible for speaking something that's going to cause someone. Now, if it's the Word of God, it's a different thing. Right. Because, you know, when God wants to deal with something in your life, when the Word is spoken, I mean, it, it, sometimes it will offend. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's be honest. But it's because, that, uh, the reason it's offending because there's something that we're doing that we're not supposed to be doing. Right. There's sin in the camp. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. yes. But just think, God, God had already told them. He had already given them that land. Right. It's yours for the taking. It's yours right. for the taking. Exactly. And there are some, you know, that just couldn't see it. Right. This word is yours for the taking. Amen. The life that you can live is yours for the taking for Christ. Are there some things that we've got to do? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, just like anything, I mean, you know, there's... You know, things you've got to do, uh, you've got to sacrifice on your job, you've got to do certain things, you've got to be in, at a certain time, right. you've got to do certain things. Well, there's things that we've got to do as well in our Christian walk with the Lord. Right. So, you know, we've got to be submissive to the Lord. Right. We've got to learn to be submissive to, uh, to those uh, that, that are over us because God has put them in place to teach us. Right. Now, if they're doing something immoral, you know, God will bring that out. Mm -hmm. It's just like the centurion whose servant was sick. And he went to Jesus, and he said, you know, my servant is sick. And Jesus said, well, I'll go heal him. He goes, no, Lord, just say the word. Because mm -hmm. I Amen. see in a, in a person under authority, mm -hmm. or I have authority, and I can say, go do this, go right. do that, you know. Right. So it's we're all under authority. Amen. You know, even even if we look like we're the most elevated person, we're still under authority. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's so, for our protection. Right, exactly. It's yeah. protecting one mm -hmm. another. Well, let's get on to the rest of these okay. characteristics. Uh, I believe number eight's next. Having impure motives, these individuals will seek out others desiring to have disciples, needing constant affirmation for their followers and that disciples, you know, desiring to have <laughs> disciples, you know. <laughs> In other words, they want others to, to jump on the bandwagon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. especially if they're offended. Right. And that others will jump on the bandwagon with them. What's that saying? My mom, my mom used to say, birds of a feather will flock together. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. And so then, then other people take on that person's offense. Uh -huh. And it may be a false offense. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, there's an, this is an eviction. Right. You oh, know, or a virus. Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. And so uh, we have to really guard against this mm -hmm. and recognize mm -hmm. it. And so, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we have. And I'm sure all of you all have. If you yeah. haven't, you will. Yeah. In your walk with the Lord. So, yeah. um, The best thing a friend or a spiritual prayer partner can do for you is not to enter into your offense. Exactly. Amen. You know, yes. But to help you pray yes. about it, to look yes. through yes. it, you know, yes. even confront you with yes. it. Yes. You know. Amen. So. Amen. I don't know which book it was that, that I was reading. It may be the one I was talking about. The Samson gentleman uh, uh, talked about uh, where... One person will be friends, uh, make friends with the another, uh, where, where they can kind of mediate in between the other, yes. the other life. But yes. what they're, what they're doing is that is they're uh, they're really wanting them to take on their offense. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. But they may be saying one thing to one friend, one thing to to another friend, and still allowing the Lord to do the healing. Uh, what what they're doing is just uh, they're taking on the form of the Jezebel spirit. I can't yes. remember which book that was in. But uh, we have to be very careful. Uh, although you may love someone so much, your friends so much, yeah. uh, it's best to let God deal with it and, yeah. and allow God to send uh, uh, some uh, a leadership or, or person, uh, whoever God wants to do it. And the best thing we can do is pray for them, right? right. And that God will open their spiritual eye. And one thing uh, I believe I posted recently. Uh, the uh, the Jezebel spirit will sometimes uh, um, smooth things over with one friend. So, well, you don't have to forgive them, or, or you know, if they have, you know, they have a friend. I think I posted this the other day, Lana. I think I think you commented on it where, you know, we can forgive someone, but that doesn't mean that we have to be reconciled, re reconciled right, right. back into the relationship right. because that relationship may. Uh, be dangerous for us, right? Spiritually, right. it's already broken. Right. It's, it's, right. it's already broken. Right. That doesn't mean you don't love them. That's right. right. That's right. You you forgive them, but you don't have to be reconciled every right. time. If if there's an opportunity where reconcil reconciliation be on both sides, that is great. And you see a life change right. in the in the other person, that is great. Right. But it's not always will right. reconciliation be there. That's true. Right. I just wanted to put that out there. Right. And if there is reconciliation, uh, the relationship will not be the it same. Be the it same. will be for the better for both parties. Right. right. Amen. Amen. That's a very good point. Read, um, <laughs> <laughs> I think you pretty well said uh, it. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I saw you open it. You did it. Right there. Okay. Uh, okay. Is it number nine? Number okay. nine. Desiring to avoid accountability, these individuals prefer to pray for people in isolated situations like in a church parking lot yeah, right. or in a corner somewhere. <laughs> and that's what it says, in a corner or in another room. Thus, innuendos and false prophetic words cannot be easily challenged. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole point, is because if they can uh, get someone in isolation, then there's not uh, someone else to hear and uh, so they're not challenged. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just like when a prophetic word is given, you know, it says let, you know, let, let one give one and then wait for the other and then the others will judge. See, it, you know, it, um, it brings accountability. Yes. Right. And it's going to bear witness. Mm -hmm. And the more people involved, you know, it's going to bear witness. Right. And so that's the, the reason, you know, uh, these spirits, they like to operate in darkness. Yes. Right. And so that's the reason to get into, a, you know, the church right. parking lot, the corner, or another room or something. Right. So they cannot be accountable. They cannot be challenged. You know, even at that, even if, if the person that they speak to will try to bring them to accountability or or to challenge them, they can control and manipulate, right. you know, or even lie. Right. Um, John Paul Jackson, what I like in his book is uh, whenever you're confronting somebody that's operating through a Jezebel spirit, you know, like you said, always take somebody with you, but also take a, a, a voice recorder or record everything that's yes. going on. Yes. So whenever that person comes back and says, you know, tries to control, manipulate, or lie about right. the situation, right. you have it recorded. Right, right, you right. Know. right. And sometimes, you know, they believe their own lies. Right. They, they actually believe that. They're deceived. So, exactly. You know, yes. and that, that's another thing. A person, right. we have to love that person, and that's we have point. to try to bring deliverance to that person right. as well. Right, You right. know, 
um, if if they're not going to uh, um, if they're not going to uh, allow deliverance to come, that's when you have to separate from that person. Right. But right. you still love them and you right. still pray for them right. and you forgive them. That's the the, right. the code right. I tried to bring my children up with: love them, pray for them, and forgive them. Right. You know, that's right. you know that's you know. Right. You know when you don't see when you you know you're you've been long suffering with a person. You know. Mm -hmm. And, and then you're not, and you've you've prayed with them, and you've counseled with them, and uh, prayed for them, and and you're not over a long period of time, and you know, not seeing any change whatsoever, right. or the person wanting to change, right. and it's just wearing you out. Or regressing, you, even. yes, or regressing. You have to step away from the situation, right. but you better be prepared they're going to be angry about that right. and bring accusations right. against you and cause other people to feel like, oh, you don't love this person. Right, exactly. Which is a lie. Right, because that person will go yeah. and try to gain sympathy from Exactly, other right. exactly. Right. But, you know, we do love them. Right. Or, you know, why else would we have spent all that time right. with them? Right. You invested all the invested time. Invested right. much into them. Yes. So right. that yes. itself was showing love. And even stepping away is showing love at times. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and pray for someone else right. to, to come along that maybe that uh, uh, can Good. speak into their lives. You know, I think about the Word of God, you know, where one sows and one waters, but God gives the increase. Right. And, uh, maybe we've done all we can do for that time, that, that, that season, and somebody else may need to pick it up. Because God is long-suffering. He wants that person delivered. Yes. But the person has got to want to be delivered, too. Right. right. Like, you know, so. we, you know, we've had a, actually experienced a lot of people coming to us, you know, you know would you pray uh, for this person to be de uh, delivered, you know? And, and, and I have to say this, is, you know, like you say, They've got to want it. Yes. And if they want it, they need to come and ask. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, right. You know, I, I believe that. Although you may have good intentions. Exactly. And you don't want to see that person go through the battles they're going through. Right. Uh, God still loves that person. Yes, right? he does. God still has his hand on that person. He's yes. got people praying for that yes, person. Yes, And uh, just continue to love them. Yes. Continue to pray for them. And then God will open their eyes enough to know that they need deliverance. Yes. Because I believe God will speak to you at some point in time. God will speak to that person. You know, something's not right with me. Right. right. Have you ever felt that somehow? Yeah. Okay. Something's right. just not right with me. I don't know what it is. Right. I mean, I, I have. Yeah. You know? Right. And you know, yes. I would, you know, Lord, you, you know, you're just gonna have to show me this, or, right. or, you know, show someone else. You know, right. they can, you know, call me up or whatever. And I've had that happen before. Right. You know, a, a friend will call me up or something saying, you know, God just placed you in my heart to pray for right. you. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Thank Praise God for yes. friends like that. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. We all need it. Don't yes, we, we do. We, we need we to be we of help. Okay, is it, is it my turn or your turn? It's your turn. Okay. <laughs> okay, we've lost count, folks. <laughs> all right. Uh, but God 10. has it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, number 10. Number 10, yes. <laughs> Eager to gain control, these people will gather others and seek to teach them. We, we, we spoke about it. We, we really jumped ahead of right. ourselves. <laughs> While the teaching... We're prophetic. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> While the teachings may begin correctly, doctrine is often established that is not supported by the Word of okay. God. Have you ever seen someone, well, this is what so-and-so said. Right. Or this is what, you know, this book said. Well, what does the Word of God say? Absolutely. Right. I'm saying that again. I know you're hearing me say that a lot today. But what does the Word of God say? Uh, don't look for uh, New Age books, for instance. You know, uh, it's all about you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, what you know, what feels good, do it. Right. But, you know, what does God's Word say? Uh, you know, we're not to, we're not to be, to please the flesh, okay. we're not to be man pleasers. We're to be God pleasers, mm -hmm. and that's what we need to seek to be: is to not not uh, go by any. Even in the, these books, although they're right. good, uh, we back it up with the Word of God, yeah, exactly. which uh, John Paul Jackson really does. This he, he yes, gives he, he gives scriptural references right. and things, and that's what I like about it. But uh, 
And what does the Word of God say about right. the situation? I think if a if someone has asked you, is this wrong? I think they already know. Right. Sometimes deep down, right? Uh, or they wouldn't be, you know, they, they're right. just wanting someone to confirm or not confirm. Uh, maybe uh, say with a Jezebel spirit, so to speak. <clears throat> if someone comes to uh, someone with a Jezebel spirit, well, do you think what Pastor said is, is uh, really wrong? What am I doing? Is, is it really wrong? Well, a Jezebel spirit will smooth that over and and please your flesh. Right. And, uh, and change the word around, so to speak. But uh, that's where the discernment comes in. Right. I was thinking two things. Um, number one, just because somebody might exhibit one or two of these characteristics does not mean that right. they are the Jezebel right. spirit. Right. So we don't want you to go witch hunt. Right. Go <laughs> witch hunt. Go snipe hunting. Look for a demon under every rock. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's not the purpose of it. Right. Uh, and another thing, too, you have this. Amen. You have the Word of God. Amen. When it's all said and done, like we've already said, you're going to be responsible before the Lord when He asks you what you did with yes. His Word. Amen. You know? Amen. Amen. Yes. And when it's been taught to you and, and, and you know, it's been brought out in Bible studies, you'll have no excuse. Right. Uh, we've got to be accountable for our actions. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't, I think, uh, even Christians sometimes don't understand the extent of that, that uh, you will reap what you sow. Oh, yes. Uh, even if it's something you've done in your past and you've mm -hmm. got in the future, and you've come to know God as your, your personal Lord and Savior, well, you're still going to reap yes. from what you sow previously. Yes. Right. Even though you have been forgiven of that, oh, yes. I mean, that's just a biblical fact. And we've, uh, we've got to learn that. And that's why it's so important what we do, what we say, our actions, right. uh, how we approach people, uh, even about others. Uh, you're sowing a seed. All right. And uh, I'm a firm believer, it, it, it'll come back. Okay. Yeah. And you may ask, you, why am I going through this? You know, I thought I got forgiveness. Uh, it, it, it's just a biblical fact. We'll reap what we sow. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's true. Amen. Good or bad. Good right. or bad. Amen. Good is true. Amen. So why not so good? Amen. 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 <laughs> and reap the benefits of it. Amen. Amen. So who's next? Uh, I guess I am. Okay. <laughs> Deceiving others by soulish prophecy or by giving words that somewhat one wants to hear these individuals seek to gain credibility. They prophesy half-truths or little-known facts as though they were from God. Such individuals may also take advantage of someone else's poor memory by twisting their previous prophecies to make it seem as if their words have come to pass. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think we kind of touched on that one, too. <laughs> that goes back to tickling, itching ears. Right. And, and, and to gain support. Right. Amen. Number 12, although the laying on of hands is biblical, these individuals like to impart a higher level in the spirit or break down walls that have held someone back by the laying on of hands. However, their touch is actually a curse. Right. Instead of a holy blessing, an evil spirit mm -hmm. may be imparted. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so important it is. Uh, and, and very dangerous as well. Um, we were in a meeting one time and uh, there was a person uh, that actually had me stand in a certain spot and this person uh, has uh, homosexual tendencies and laid hands on me and I'm going to tell you I had a battle after that praise God for people that knew how to pray and pray with me mm -hmm. uh, I could go into more circumstances, but this is where not only the leadership, but other people, like you said, uh, need to be watchful in, in what's going on. What's really going on here, because there was like a lot of confusion going on, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, the enemy is in that, and, right. uh, and actually there was someone in leadership at the time who um, they were help promoting some of this. And so that's a hard place to be in right. to, to confront these issues, you know, because it does so much.